Hey everyone, it's Christian again. So today we're gonna take a look at Easter because guess what, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. Can you believe it's already here? You know, I'm pretty sad that we don't get to gather together at the church building to worship, but that doesn't mean we still can't worship God and we still can't be thankful for what he did for us. So today we're gonna look at that. Last week we looked at uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem where everybody was excited and was cheering and was, they were happy that Jesus was there. He was treated like a king. Well, today we're gonna look at how those crowds completely changed their demeanor. And now we're ready to crucify him. They were ready to, to send him to die. That's what we're gonna look at today. So before that though, Jesus took the disciples to the garden of Gethsemane, okay? They went to the garden and he told his disciples, hey, um, I want you guys to sit here and pray and I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna pray myself. And so he went and prayed for a little bit and he came back and well, he found that the disciples were asleep. They had fallen asleep when he asked them to sit there and pray. So let's take a look at what scripture tells us. Uh, he, scripture says that in Matthew 26, verse 39, okay, Matthew 26, verse 39, says, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He was, he was wanting the cup to pass from him, but he knew that the father's will was the most important will of everybody. We need to follow what he has for us. And so he was gonna do it, and he did. He followed through with what the plan was, right? So after that, he, the disciples were asleep and uh, he went over and woke them up. And uh, as they were getting ready to leave, uh, someone showed up, Judas. Okay, Judas Iscariot showed up and he came and he had a crowd with him that had uh, swords and uh, clubs and things and they were there to arrest Jesus. And so Judas actually went up and kissed Jesus on the cheek. And that was the signal that this was the man that you needed to arrest. And so that's what they did. The men came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. And what they did is they took him to the high priest so they come to the high priest, the leader, if you will, um, and they mocked Jesus. They, uh, witnesses told fake stories about him, stories that were completely made up. They weren't true. Um, but because of that, um, he got sent to be crucified. So let's see what scripture says. Matthew 26, 62 through 64, it says this. The high priest stood up and said to him, don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said it, Jesus told them. Well, <laughs> that made the high priest furious. So he sent Jesus to Pilate and Pilate was the governor. He was just the governor of the kind of the city. And uh, Pilate couldn't find anything wrong with him. He hadn't done a single thing wrong. But Pilate said, all right, all right, here's what we're gonna do. I can either free Jesus, a man who I can't find any fault in, or I can, fee, I can free Barabbas, and he was a well-known criminal. He was kind of like the guy everybody knew always he got into trouble. Well, guess what? The crowds wanted Barabbas to be free and told, they said to Jesus, crucify him, crucify him. That's what happened. These same crowds that were excited when Jesus came is now telling them they want him to be crucified. They've completely turned on Jesus. So, well, what happened from then is uh, Jesus was taken and he was given a crown of thorns. They made it out of very thorns and they stuck it on his head and it kind of dug into his, to his head and they took him and uh, they crucified him. So he was on the cross for quite a long time, uh, but from noon to three, so about three hours in the afternoon, uh, the skies were dark. Everything in the sky was dark, which is weird because it's during the day, but it was dark and because of what was happening. So finally, Jesus cried out to God before he died. Right before he died, he cried out to God. And as soon as he did, there was a giant earthquake that just rocked the, rocked the world. And someone who was at, at the cross, was actually there with him, said, surely this man was the son of God. Surely this man was the son of God. They had crucified Jesus. So Jesus died and he was taken and buried in a tomb of a rich man. He offered his tomb to him and so he, he, he was buried in it. And there was this giant heavy stone was rolled in front of it. And there were guards that were posted because they were worried that someone might steal Jesus's body. So that's what they did. Well, on the third day, okay, so this is three days later, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they came to the tomb. Well, suddenly there was a strong earthquake that shook everything and an angel appeared. It looked like lightning, scripture tells us. And this angel appeared and the stone was rolled away. Um, and this is what scripture tells us, Matthew 28, five through seven. The angel told the woman, don't be afraid because I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. So the women, they were excited. So they got up and they ran, and on the way there, they hear greetings. Well, guess what? It was Jesus who was greeting them. Jesus met them on the road. The women knelt down and they worshiped him because he's worthy. He deserves all of that worship and, and more. So Jesus, he was died, he was buried, and then he rose from the dead three days later, just like scripture said would happen, right? God loves each and every one of us. And that's why he sent his son to do that, to die on the cross, okay? He sent his son to die on the cross so that he could take all of our sin, all the things that we do wrong, and punish his son for it in our place. That way we don't have to have that punishment. And God wants us to have a relationship with him. And to have a relationship with him, here's what you need to do. You need to admit that you're a sinner. You need to admit that you do things that are wrong, that you mess up. I admit that I do things wrong all the time. I, I, I do, I'm not perfect, none, none of us are. And then you have to be, you have to believe that Jesus died on the cross. Believe in this story that I just told, because it's more than a story. This is truth. This is from the Bible. This is pure truth. And then see, you got to confess your sins. You got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You have to confess that he is, he's Lord. He's the, make him the boss of your life. And then you can have a relationship with him and you get to spend an eternity in heaven with him instead of separated from God whenever you die. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? That's the best news that you can ever hear. So as you are gathered together and we have Easter tomorrow, I want you to come together as a family and just think about what God did, how he sent his son, his only son, to die on the cross, that he loved us so, so much that he would sacrifice his son. I can't imagine giving Parker, my daughter, up for anything. Like, I love her so much, and I can't imagine how hard it was for God to send his son to die on the cross. So think about that together as you uh, prepare to worship the king, to worship God for all the amazing things that he's done for us. And I will see you guys next time.